Keith Pains. Hey folks, in this video, I'm going to talk about digital kit bashing in Blender. A few of my YouTuber compatriots did videos about digital kit bashing in various different programs recently, which I was unfortunately too busy to participate in, but I will leave links to those in the description. This video is made in relation to my Kickstarter Base Bashing Volume 1, live at the time of this video's release, but you can obviously use these techniques with any digital files you have access to. The easiest way to kit bash digital elements is to simply overlap them in your slicing software. I'm using Lychee Slicer because it has a scan for islands function, and it's where I do my supports. But to be clear, I do not slice in Lychee Slicer. To bash things onto your base, simply take the elements you want to add, like this skull here, and place it where you want it. As long as it is overlapping with another object, it will print as one. You may need to add some additional supports depending on how you arrange things, and you should take care not to create pockets that would trap resin, making it difficult or impossible to clean out. That goes for any digital kit bashing technique though. When I hit the scan for islands button, there is only one that I have to worry about on the horn. The ones at the tip of the nose are inside the base, so they will be fine. I also check to make sure it isn't poking out the back, and when I'm done, I delete the island search results. I'll show you why later, but for now, this one is done. Quick and easy. Blender can be more difficult sometimes though. I forgot to mention, you will need to export these to slice them in Chi2Box, and you use the export scene function to do so. In Blender, you can do file import STL. You can see it has a hotkey here that I've added myself because I use it so much. You can add a hotkey to pretty much anything in Blender by right clicking it. I'm going to bash onto an unsupported base here, and then I'll show you how I copy supports from one base to another. For this one, I'm going to put this skelly fellow here face down in the dirt. Hotkeys are G to grab and move, R to rotate, and S to scale. My goal is to not make any new islands that will need support, but this model is pretty complex, so it will definitely need a few. With the arm, I was careful to get the fingertips submerged in the dirt, as well as getting the forearm in contact with the rocky part. The final Kickstarter rewards will have the arm in separate parts, which will make this easier, but this worked out pretty well. One more thing, that rib cage is sticking out the bottom, which isn't what we want, so let's cut it off with a boolean modifier and a box. Create a box, and move it over top of the part that you want to cut off. Select the skelly part, and add a boolean modifier. The settings default to cutting, so you don't have to touch anything. Just select the box as the target. If you hide the box, you can see that our object is now flat on the bottom. Apply the modifier, and you're done. Now, with Mr. Skelly placed all perfectly, we can export. Exporting has a couple options to note, batch mode and export selected. In this case, we don't want either. That means everything in our scene will be exported as one STL file. Now, it's time for some STL silliness. You can see when I import it into Leechy Slicer, it looks red and tells you it has 731 holes in it. You can click the button here and it does an admirable job, but not good enough. This other button presumably costs money, which is why Leechy Slicer is trying to scare you with red meshes and mention of 700 holes. It doesn't have 700 holes. You can print it like it is and it will come out just fine, and if you trust me, then you can just skip ahead. I can't say this for all STLs, some of them will have holes, but I can import all four original objects, and you can see that they are all blue, no holes. Somehow, the exporter is adding geometry, and this is actually the worst I've seen it. I can fix it though. STL is a terrible file format. In Blender, import the object you just exported and tab into edit mode. Press Shift A to add, and P to add a plane. If you can't see it, immediately after creation it will be the only thing selected, so you can press G to move it to a convenient spot. Press 2 to switch to Edge Select Mode if you're not already there, and select one of the edges. Now, press Shift G for Select Similar, and choose Amount of Faces Around an Edge. This will find every edge in the object that has only one face attached to it. You can see the other edges of the plane are selected, and random ones all over the model. 708 of them. I'm going to deselect the plane, then press X to delete, and make sure to select Edge. If you repeat the process, select an edge of the base, Shift G, etc., you will see that only four edges are selected now, and those are the plane, which I can now delete. If any of those edges were around a hole, however, deleting them would only make the hole bigger. None of them were, and when we re-import into Lychee Slicer, we run into another hidden issue. Lychee caches your imported objects. 
when I re-import the new file with the same name, you see it now has 1068 holes, which baffles me. I was expecting 731 again, and I have no explanation as to why it has more. If you export with a different name, however, it imports blue, with no holes. Okay, so now we can finally add extra supports. I'm going to rotate it by 60 degrees on the x-axis, and lift object by 7 millimeters. This is so it will align exactly with the supports on the pre-supported version. Now I hit the search for islands button, and I'm pleasantly surprised, my practice run needed way more. First up, I'm going to add a few medium supports around the front here, because my test prints showed them to be necessary, and the final Kickstarter release will already have them in place. Next, I'm going to add light support to the islands on the spine and teeth. Sometimes you can just click and one will appear, other times you hold Ctrl, Alt, and click on two different spots. They seem to have a minimum length, which gave me a bit of trouble here. They are extremely tiny though, and will be very difficult to see. When done, I export and bring it back to Blender. I've hidden everything else, and imported the pre-supported version as well as the one I'm working on. First, I select the pre-supported one, tab into edit mode, and press L while hovering over the base to select linked, P to separate, then hit selected. Now that they're two separate objects, I hide the supports. In edit mode, I select all the vertices around the base of the object, then hit shift S, and 2 to move the 3D cursor to selected, in this case their center point. Then in object mode, I select the object and right click, hit set origin, then origin to 3D cursor. Then I remember that it's the supports that need it, not the base, so I unhide the supports and repeat. Now I do the same for the object we're working on, separate the supports so I don't accidentally select them, then in edit mode select the exact same vertices and hit shift S 2 to move the cursor to selected. Now I can go back to the supports and hit shift S 8 to move object to cursor. The supports will move so their origin is aligned with the cursor, placing it in the exact same spot in relation to the new object as it was to the last object. Now select both sets of supports, then the base, and hit command J to join them. I also take a second to add better skates to the bottom. Lychee Slicer makes really small ones, so I always cover them up with taller ones that have slanted edges making them easier to lift off the build plate. They have to be perfectly aligned with the bottom of the others though, which I messed up the first time here, so I had to do it again. It also imported red again, so I went and did the thing I did earlier to fix it. I'm planning on distributing these files as free downloads, so it won't do to have them looking red. One last thing I forgot to do was show you why to delete unused island indicators in Lychee Slicer. If you look at the bottom here, where there was one that I didn't support, you can see that Lychee Slicer has actually added geometry to my object in spite. If you delete the search island results, they won't be there. Lychee Slicer is a silly program. The final things I will show you in this video is batch exporting and local space. To make things quicker, I'm going to bash these crystals onto pre-supported bases, and to do this more efficiently, I'm going to use a local space. When moving, scaling, or rotating an object, if you press X, Y, or Z, you can restrict movement to those axes. If you press it again, it switches to local space. So for all these crystals, after I rotate them by 60 degrees on the x-axis, they are no longer quote-unquote pointing up. Their local z-axes are now pointing 30 degrees above the horizontal, and the local y-axes are pointing 60 degrees up. Now, when moving all these crystals into place, I can restrict their axes to local Y or Z, and they will move on that 60 degree tilt. Where X, Y, and Z restrict to an axis, Shift X, Y, and Z restrict from that axis, only allowing movement on the other two, and pressing it twice will again switch to local. So if you want to move the crystal around the face of the base without moving it closer or farther, you would press Shift Z twice. Then when I see that all of my crystals are still floating well above the surface, I can move them down towards it by pressing Z twice. And the final bit for this video is using batch mode. Batch mode will export all objects separately, so for the crystals to export with the bases, you need to join them. Select the crystals, then the base they go with, so the base is the yellow one, and hit Command or Control J to join them. When the crystals are properly joined, select both bases, and in the Export dialog, switch Batch Mode to Object, and check Export Selected. If you don't, all the other crystals will export as their own objects, even if they are hidden. And that is all. I import them into Lychee, and they show up blessedly blue. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If it is still before October 13th, 2021, this Kickstarter is still live, and if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link there to the files for these bases. I'm going to join them more permanently though, so I'm not giving away my crystals and skelly bits. In my next video, I will go further in depth with the boolean modifier and show you just how I do that and what else the boolean modifier can do for you. Check out my other channel for updates on all the latest 3D printing Patreon and Kickstarter campaigns. Huge thanks to all my patrons for supporting me, and thank you for watching.